I think I'm going to probably do a couple of different ones today because, um, I don't know, the talk, the things that I was thinking about talking about, um, they can be separated, I think. One of them is, um, you know, I'm always seeing all these people who are looking for their twin flame or their soulmate, you know, because that is what this has been like in this world. It's all been, you know, i got to find my person. Um, I know I've talked about this before, so I don't know. I might be saying the exact same things I said the last time. But um, anyways, I feel uh, I feel like I'm supposed to say them. So, um, you know, you have all of these people who are looking for their soulmate or their twin flame and all of this, um, you know, these romantic kind of ideas of a relationship. And the thing is, is it's not about, um, it's not about like you could go out and you can find your true love and then all of a sudden everything's going to be okay. And that is where I think people are approaching it wrong. Because if you're looking for your soulmate, you know, and you're in that position, because believe me, I've did this. I'm saying this from experience. So I'm not just saying all blah, blah, blah. I'm talking from my own experiences. If you think, you know, like, oh, I'm going to, that's my soulmate, you know, uh, and there, there'll be things where you'll be like, oh, this is destiny, man. Like they just show up. They're just at certain places and, you know, uh, you, you know, like, oh, I'm supposed to be with this person. And, um, you know, when you are going into that kind of relationship and you're not a healed person. So what you're, see, the thing is, is like when you're out there looking for your, your looking is the one thing you don't want to be looking. So when you are out there desiring or looking for your person, you know, I mean, it's freaking so common right now. <laughs> Everybody is like, oh, I got to find my soulmate, my, tr my true love. And, um, the thing is, is when you're not in a healed position, when you haven't worked on yourself, when you haven't raised your vibration to your best, then you're going to pull in, yeah, you're going to pull in soulmates. You're going to pull in all the contracts that are there to teach you. So it's good. You know, pull in your soulmates and stuff, pull them towards you, but don't get disappointed when it's not that love relationship that you wanted when it is there to teach you, because that's the road, that's the path to get to where you want to be. You know, you have to go through those relationships. You have to go through the journey to get to the person that you want to be with. So, you know, um, everybody kind of thinks like they can skip parts, you know, oh, I can go from A to N. Uh, that's fine. That's what I do. It, it, it doesn't work. You know, just like I've said, when, you know, taking tests and stuff, you know, you can cheat, but that doesn't mean you know this stuff. And this life journey, soul journey stuff is so you know this stuff. It's, it's in you. It becomes a part of your imprint. So you have to go through the cycles to get to the desire. So if you have this desire, I want my divine partnership. I want to be with the person that is my best person. That is when you've got to become your best person. That best person's not coming until you're your best person. And you do have to go through a lot of karmic relationships. You have to go through a lot of relationships and they are soulmates. People who are hurting you are still your soulmates. Um, and the thing is, is it don't get focused on what they've done to hurt. You get focused on what you can do to heal what came up. Because what comes up to the surface is what you need to heal. So... When you start going into these relationships and you're like, um, you know, and plus we don't have to get just directly into, um, I'm going to get married and have babies with you. You know, that's another problem that we've had in our society. You know, we're too quick to jump into this kind of stuff. I mean, people are getting pregnant before they even get married. They're getting pregnant and then the marriage comes second. Like it was an afterthought. And so people are feeling forced into relationships or angry. They're suddenly seeing this person isn't even right for me, you know? So when we start approaching things in a different way of, you know, like I'm going, I want a divine partnership. I want my best self. I want to meet them. Um, you know, my, my divine counterpart, the person who is my, um, you know, the best half of 
This is the best half of me because you have to be your best to find that other part of your soul. So you can't just go out as a broken person um, and um, find this person. You know, it, you will find the the steps that will lead you to that person. So don't get discouraged. Don't get disappointed if you're going through like this relationship and that relationship and that they feel strong. Like they feel like, oh man, I'm supposed to be with this person. I know it. Yeah, you are. But it's all about learning because it's all the steps towards becoming your best self. And then when you get to that certain point, like, when they started showing me who my divine counterpart is, they started showing me I was already on the path to healing. I had already walked through that door. It was like I went into that room and said, okay, I'm ready. But it wasn't like I went in like, oh, well, I'm going to do this now. No, I got a brain injury and I had to start healing. And healing is what brought me into the room. Once I got into the room, then they started showing me like, this is your person. This is what you need to do. You need to work on you. And they start just focusing me on me and um, helping me to find balance. But that person was always, always right there. I mean, their name, their um, everything about them. And then, you know, you start seeing like, oh my God, this person is so much like me. It's trippy. Um, and especially if you didn't even know. But, you know, like I've known for uh, four, I think four or four and a half years. And I, um, they start showing me and yeah, I mean, once you start seeing, you're like, oh, okay, I'm ready. Let's go. Let's go. You know, and no, <laughs> no, there's a lot to go before you get there. So um, it's like you can have your eye on the prize. Like I know my person is my counterpart. And I know that we have, um, you know, something, you know, a great part of our life to live together. And, um, you know, but it is all, it, when they talk about divine timing, things have to go in order. Just like I said, you can't skip from A to Z. You know, you have to go in order. And that's what divine timing is all about. It is the order to things. It's this has to happen. This has to happen. That makes this happen. That makes this happen. This happens. You know, and in that happening is when you're learning so being present in the moment and learning is how you progress. So when you are focused on you and your healing, and not everybody, I mean, you know, some people probably won't know who their divine counterpart is. I mean, everybody's journey is different. Mine was shown to me. And every time I started being like, no, nope, no, nope, no, nope, or I wanted to pull away, it would just come, it would just come in harder and harder and harder. Like, nope. <laughs> this is a contract girl and so you know you, you will when you're on the path you'll know it's the right path they will continuously you know shower you with information to keep you knowing where you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to be doing and the whole thing is is um it isn't about like you can just go and be like oh hey just if i if i think about it and you know then i can find my divine partner no, you have to do the work, you know, the, the partnerships, like all of the, all of the experiences are partnerships, but they're all about the learning. Even when you get to your divine partnership, but to get to your divine partnership, you have to have, you know, gotten rid of a lot of old junk. You had to go through a lot of experiences because if you go into that relationship, carrying all of this old baggage, then you've self-destructed this relationship. This relationship is pure. It is for a healed heart. It isn't for, you know, damaged goods. And most of us are going out into the world as damaged goods, looking for someone to complete us, to make us feel better, to give us purpose. And in the journey, it has been about, you know, I had to heal myself. I had to, you know, find my own power and strength to get through a lot of the things I've been through. And, uh, you know, went through a lot of different relationships, learned a lot of different stuff. And then, um, you know, when I was going through my healing and then um, went rebuilding myself, then, um, you know, it, I've had to learn about patience. I've had to learn about trust. I've had to learn about faith. 
So none of these things are some simple thing. People think like, oh, I can just go find my twin flame. I'll just go out and find him. And then I'm going to have this great life and I'm going to be happy. And I'm going to finally have someone who loves me. But you don't love yourself. You're not going to find anybody who loves you. That's why the journey is about learning to love yourself. Once you love yourself, then you're not putting that on someone else because you can't have a real true partnership. If you're giving someone, you're, you're giving them all your power. You're, you're saying here, make me feel better. Make me feel better. Make me feel complete. And it's very frustrating. That's why so many relationships become so toxic because we're all wanting someone to fix us when really it's us that needs to fix us. And when we do that, it propels us into a new state of being. In that state of being is where you will find your true partnership of that's based on love and respect. But you have to learn to love and respect yourself before you can go to the relationship. So, you know, um, I, I just think it's important for people to just really understand how how valuable and how important it is in this life journey right now at this time on earth is to focus on you focus on your healing focus on becoming your best self and you know it has a lot to do with to where we're headed you know the age of aquarius like i've said before it's not going to be like this corporate world where we're trying to fit in or what skills can i bring to them what can i do what can i learn from them how can i make their company better no you become your own product you are your surplus so you've got to figure out what do i have to offer what what am i good at what do i do that is valuable that people could you know come to me for and you start going in that direction and you start, it's like you start coloring in your, your picture. You color in your, you, you're coloring yourself with, it, it's like a rainbow colors. You, you begin to blossom, like all the flowers in the garden just start, everything just starts coming to life in you. You know, and we have gone through this death of this world has been so decaying and so empty and so it's it's just been so much about death and uh you know harvesting <laughs> uh but um anyways i kind of you know i just want to get that where people really understand you you can't jump into a divine partnership until you've done the work then you gently glide into it it, it becomes it's a it's like a magnet you pull towards each other as you're healing. You pull towards each other until all of a sudden you look over and you're on the path together. And then you, um, then you're, you're ready to, um, you're ready for a new adventure, really a new adventure to what we're used to in this life. So anyways, there's some more stuff I want to talk about. I'll be right back.